Shalom, blessings in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. My name is Miriam Rachel. Hi, sheep in the garden. It's your faithful black sheep. Today, I wanted to get back into the Tablets of Thoth and explore it some more, this time from the beginning. <laughs> so cuddle up, and let's see how far we can get together. I have cherry-picked the entire book. So this is a fair warning on that. So, um, the history of the tablets translated in the following pages is strange and beyond the belief of modern scientists. Their antiquity is stupendous, dating back some 36,000 years B.C. The writer is Thoth, an Atlantean priest king who founded a colony in ancient Egypt and after the sinking of the mother country. He was the builder of the Great Pyramid of Giza, erroneously attributed to Cheops, Enki, and Enlil. We have to remember also take responsibility Excuse me for those, those pyramids. Um, in it, he incorporated his knowledge of the ancient wisdom and also securely secreted records and instruments of ancient Atlantis. For some 16,000 years, he ruled the ancient race of Egypt from approximately 50,000 B.C. to 36 B.C. 36, it's a different, I guess it's 36.000 B.C. Anyway, at that time, the ancient barbarous race among which he and his followers had settled had been raised to a high degree of civilization. Thoth uh, was an immortal, that is, he had conquered death, conquered death, passing only when he willed, and even then not through death. His vast wisdom made him ruler over the various Atlantean colonies, including the ones in South and Central America. And we know that we've got the earthlings, they were pre-Adamite creations that they had created. And then Yahuwah created us in one day, and then they started using us for miscegenation as well, as we know. As the uh, time came for him to leave Egypt, he erected the Great Pyramid over the entrance of the Great Halls of Bemente, which, uh, again, we need to remember that Anki and Enlil take responsibility for, and actually makes more sense that the Anunnaki put it there. But this boy thought, this man thought, I mean, he's all over the all over Egypt on the walls in the in the pyramids and different places like that so he's definitely one of them um, and he's so I guess there's several people that want to take responsibility for the pyramids but we now know they're pretty old <laughs> they're like first world age old that's how old they are so um, we're not first world age but a prior world age and we need to stop labeling everything so carefully when it's it's not that okay I uh, prior world age right because we know let's let's just add up the time just real quick real quick let's say there are where did it go if there are 12 cycles right you've got starting with Aries and ending in Pisces we are now in the age of Pisces, and we're going to find here, and, well, not here, but in the Tablets of Thoth, where they talked about moving from the age of Taurus into the age of Aries, or the Ram. So, um, that was a long, 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 long time ago, so they've been gone quite a while. And for us to say we're the first world age or the second world age is ridiculous. We know just by the ruins uh, that we can explore even today that you know mankind has been here a lot longer so i had just written it down i think it's on this book that i'm using as a camera stand <laughs> so um i'm not sure where i wrote it down and maybe the holy spirit doesn't want me to share it with you maybe that's why i can't find it um hold on i'm not giving up yet a little bit more hard-headed than that but okay well we can do the math together let me find a pencil 
That pencil is not sharpened. Find another pencil. Okay. Let's say we've got, for this particular cycle, 12 ages. Okay, you got 12 ages times 7,000 years each. It comes out to 84,000 years just for one cycle. If you've got 12, you know, 12 sets of 7,000 years, that's a total of 84,000 years. So if you really want to know what time it is, right? Uh, <laughs> and we know also in Scripture it talks about that he had made worlds before that that were destroyed as well. So we can't really reach back that far. We don't have the records, but we've got bits and pieces we can put together. Okay, so when the time came for him to leave Egypt, he erected the Great Pyramid over the entrance of the Great Halls of Amenti. So these tablets were made and were found in the Great Pyramid. They were not published until 1925. And they, the original tablets were written in ancient Hebrew or Paleo-Hebrew. And Zachariah Stitchin doesn't want to tell you that either. They were all written in Paleo-Hebrew. So, uh, they say they are 36,000 years old, and, uh, oh, here, I finally found my, my first, my first notes, and how, uh, that is absolutely possible if you look at it from this large, big picture time scale, okay? So, um, let's jump right in here. Okay, we want to talk about Satan. Down through the ages I have lived, seeing those around me taste the cup of death and return again in the light of life. Gradually from the kingdoms of Atlantis passed waves of consciousness that had been one with me, only to be re replaced by spawn of a lower star. So you do want to believe that Thoth was a good guy and that that lower star was Satan. And it also makes me want to question whether Thoth was actually uh, Jesus. We know that he appeared for it with Abraham and had dinner with him, right? I mean, he's, he's, he's probably, he can do whatever he wants. He's the creator of all. He's, the, you know, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. He, you know, your daddy owns Macy's. You don't have to ask permission for anything. You can, so I imagine he's been, um, and we also found him in the tablets of Enki. And he showed up. And in the tablets of Inki and gave them advice and you can recognize Jesus you can always recognize him because he's compassionate he's soft spoken he's loving and uh, he's usually got white hair so all right. all right the dweller in obedience to the law the word of the master grew into flower downward into darkness, turn the thoughts of the Atlanteans, until at last in his wrath, in his wrath arose from his aguanti, the dweller. This word has no English equivalent. It means a state of detachment. Kind of reminds me of the planet X, sorry. And then he goes on, speaking the word Calling the power. And who is the word? The word became flesh and dwelt among us. Amen. Jesus is the word. I am the way and the truth and the life, he said. Even in the tablets of Thoth. Right? It's crazy. I mean, so we know, you know, this is still blowing my mind. It's age is stupendous. Okay, let's continue. Speaking the word... And calling the power. We know all we have to do is say Jesus and he comes. Deep in the heart's earth, earth's heart, the sons of Amente heard and hearing, directed the changing of the flower of fire that burns eternally. That is the sun, right? Changing and shifting using the logos until that great fire changed its direction. And what would effect does that have on us when the sun starts rising in the west instead of in the east that's a pole flip right everything is upside down everything is gone the world is over and he continues over the world then broke the great waters 
drowning and sinking, changing Earth's balance until only the Temple of Light was left standing on the great mountain. On Erdendal, still rising out of the water, some there were who were living, saved from the rush of the fountains. And um, called to me then the master saying, God, so when he said that, that some were saved, I was thinking, well, this isn't the flood, because we know there were other floods, right? Like, I mean, there was only one worldwide flood where like almost everybody was drowned. However, called to me then the master saying, gather ye together my people, take them by the arts ye have learned of far across the waters, until ye reach the land of the hairy barbarians, dwelling in caves of the desert. Now those are the um, earthlings, the pre-Adamite, they came before us, they came before us, okay, and they came about through the miscegenation between Sasquatch and the Anunnaki. So God just pretty much laughed at that hairy barbarian guy and created us. Now, I don't have anything against hairy teddy bear guys. In fact, I think that's very attractive. I mean, I, I'm, I'm never going to be attracted to a man again, but... I'm not, I don't have anything against hair, is what I'm saying. I'm saying this is a whole different race of humans. A completely different race. Barbarians that live in caves and come out and, with, with spears and shovels. You know, it's, it's not us. It's not us. We've never done that. The only part of us that ever lived in caves was Adam and Eve when they lived in the Cave of Treasures, which we know from Scripture is in Bethlehem, Right? So people are looking in a lot of wrong places for some wonderful things. The Cave of Treasures is in Bethlehem. But generally speaking, we like to dwell in habitations that we have made with our own hands. That's a very good general rule that covers us all. All right, so the fire changed its direction over the world, uh, and um, some were saved. And um, and then he tells him, follow ye there the plan that ye know of. Gathered I then my people and entered the great ship of the master. Upward we rose into the morning. This is what we call a UFO. Dark beneath us lay the temple. They are not unidentified. I don't even know why we call them that. They're just flying saucers is what they are. Suddenly over it rose the water. So there goes the temple. Temple's gone, vanished from earth until the time until the time appointed was the great temple. And what are we seeing right now? We're seeing oceans and rivers roll back all over the world and temples revealed. I expect this temple in these last days to be uncovered as the ocean rolls back on some shore, probably outside of Jerusalem or somewhere on that vicinity. Or I don't know where it was. It could even be up by Antarctica. You know, it just depends on where this particular uh, station was, this, this landing station that they had built. Fast we fled toward the sun of the morning until beneath us lay the land of the children of Kim. So they ran to Egypt. Yeah, they probably started up north and came down to Egypt. Raging they came with cudgels and spears, lifted in anger, seeking to slay and utterly destroy the sons of Atlantis. Okay, nobody knows where Atlantis is, so... Then I raised my staff and directed a ray of vibration. And scripture says it will never be found again. Glory, hallelujah. What a sinful nation. Striking them still in their tracks as fragments of stone on the mountain. Then I spoke to them in words, calm and peaceful. Telling them of the might of Atlantis, saying we were the children of the sun and its messengers. Cowed I them by my display of magic science until at my feet they groveled when I released them. Now, he calls it magic, right? But we know that Jesus, all he had to do was just say, peace be still. And for God to let this person survive, he had to be a godly man, right? Because he wiped out Atlantis. It sunk. It's gone. So for somebody to be able to get away, that Yahuwah let him get away, and that he wrote down these tablets for us, um, we're just going to compare them to Scripture every chance we get. 
Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. He says, Then I raised my staff and directed a ray of vibration, striking them still in their tracks as fragments of stone of the mountain. Now, when I was in uh, New Age, we would say, if you raise your vibration high enough, then people of a lower vibration can't get anywhere near you. In fact, if you're zigging, they're zagging. That's what they teach you in the secret, right? That, that a lower vibration cannot come near you. So it could be that he came at them with such a ray of love. It doesn't say he killed them. It actually says he used calming, soothing words to calm them. You know, that he just froze them long enough to change their minds about how they felt about him and then release them. But he did it all with this super high vibration of love, let's say. Let's hope it was love. Because um, he says, Then I spoke to them in words calm and peaceful. Okay? Somebody who's on a war path, somebody who is not peaceful, is not going to say things calmly and peacefully. Telling them of the might of Atlantis, saying we were children of the sun. Okay, so long dwelt we in the land of Kim. But we know that the Egyptian and the fallen ones that came from this bloodline that lived in Egypt, they did end up enslaving the people for centuries, you know, or hundreds of years, whatever, um, and making them worship them and everything else. They fell into idol worship themselves when they were actually uh, had agreed to come and teach us the ways of Yahuwah. Long ago we dwelt in the land of Kem, and that is Egypt, long and yet long again, until obeying the commands of the Master, while, who, while sleeping, yet lives eternally. I sent from me, the sons of Atlantis, sent them in many directions, that from the womb of time, wisdom might rise again in her children. Long time dwelt I, in the land of Kem, or Egypt, doing great works by the wisdom within me, upward grew into the light of knowledge, the children of Kem, watered by the rains of my wisdom. Blasted I then a path to Amenti, so that I might retain my powers, living from age to age, a son of Atlantis, keeping the wisdom and preserving the records." So he could be like an earlier version of Enoch, like a scribe of the Most High. I'm still guessing here. I'm still trying to put it together. Let's read it. Let's read it together. He mentions an energy net, energy net around the earth. Raised I high over the entrance, a doorway, a gateway leading down to Amenti. And back then, Amenti wasn't just hell. It was heaven and hell. It was the abode of the dead, uh, afterlife. We all went there to await the first coming of the Messiah. Few there would be with courage to dare it. Few pass the portal to dark Amenti, raised over the passage I, a mighty pyramid, using the power that overcomes the earth force. We know there is an energy force around the net. We also, uh, around the earth, we are, un we are uh, energy net around the earth. <laughs> we call the Van Allen Belt, right? Deep and yet deeper placed I, a force house or chamber, from it I carved a circular passage reaching almost to the great summit. There in the apex set I, the crystal sending the ray into the time space, drawing force from out of the ether, concentrating upon the gateway to Amenti. So he's literally using magic. So he, uh, we read this the other day, you know, he says to, to fast for three days and lie in his sarcophagus, sarcophagus for three days, and then he'll come and talk to you. Let me, let, let me, I don't need to remind you that you can fast and yeah, you can hear God's voice better, but you don't have to fast for God to talk to you. And you certainly don't have to lie in a coffin and wait for him to come to you in the dark. How terrifying would that be? You can talk to him anywhere, anytime. You've got a red line through the Holy Spirit. Let's pick it up right now. Daddy? Daddy? Hi, it's me calling from Sheep in the Garden. We love you. Ah, oh, he says he loves you too. We'll be home soon, Daddy. Ah, oh, yay, hallelujah. He says he's coming soon. All right, well, let's get this party rocking. Talk to you later, Daddy. That's a red line to God right now. 
You can talk to your father. There's nothing in between you and him except for your pride. All right? Lift ever upwards your eyes toward the light. Surely in time you are one with the master. Surely by right you are one with the master. Surely by right you are one with the all. Amen. Now I depart from you. And he says, I will be with you, helping, guiding you into the light. But now I go down in the darkness of night. And this is what Thoth looked like. And we notice he's got the eye of Horus and he's got the Ankh and he's got a Merkaba here and he's got the wheel of life. So he's a father of wisdom, etc., etc. Let's move on to the halls of Amenti. Deep in the earth's heart lie the halls of Amenti. Far neath the islands of sunken Atlantis, the halls of the dead and the halls of the living, all bathed in the fire of the infinite all. Let's read that again because that's what used to happen to people before, when they died. They didn't go to heaven or hell, right? They went here. Deep in the heart of earth lie the halls of Amenti. Far neath the islands of sunken Atlantis, halls of the... <clears throat> Halls of the dead and what else? Halls of the living, bathed in the fire of the infinite all. Stop being afraid of God's fire, right? It's not going to burn you. In fact, you'll be made of it by the time he's done with you, right? Far in the past, lost in space-time, the children of light look down on the world. And we know that is the fallen ones, right? See the children of men in their bondage, bound by the force that came from beyond. Knew they that only by freedom from bondage could man ever rise from the earth to the sun. Now, how is that even possible? Do as thou wilt. When, we're, when are we going to do as we should? Screw do as thou wilt. I don't want freedom. I don't want freedom. The bondage to do as I should. That law is written in each one of our hearts. It's not, it's not negotiable. That's why we're here. That's why we fell. It's not negotiable. Let's use this short period of time that we've been given to repent and to start living lives for God wisely. All right. Deep in the halls of life grew a flower, flaming, expanding, driving backward the night. Placed in the center, a gray, a ray of great potence, life-giving, light-giving, filling with power all who came near it. Placed they around it thrones, two and thirty, places for each of the third children of light. Placed so that they were bathed in the radiance, Filled with the life from the eternal light. There, time after time, placed they their first created bodies so that they might be filled with the spirit of life. Um, 100 years out of each thousand must the life-giving light flame forth on their bodies, quickening, awakening the spirit of life. And I really can't comment on that because I have no idea. It sounds like they're putting themselves, their bodies into a state of incubation for 100 years out of every 1,000 to rejuvenate their youth. Because, you know, they don't have souls. They can't go to heaven. What are they going to do? So they're in the circle from eon to eon. Sit the great masters. Living a life not known among men. They're in the halls of life. They lie sleeping. Free flows their soul through the bodies of men. Time after time, while their bodies are sleeping, incarnate they in the bodies of men. <laughs> Teaching and guiding onward and upward out of the darkness into the light there in the hall of life. Filled with their wisdom, known not to the races of men living for forever neath the cold fire of life 
sat, sit the children of light. Times there are when they awaken and they come from the depths to be lights among men, infinite they among finite. He who, progress, who by progress has grown from the darkness lifted himself from the night into light. Free is he made of the halls of Amenti, free from the flower of light and of life. Guided he then by wisdom and knowledge, passes from man to the master of life. There he may dwell as one with the masters, free from the bonds of the darkness of night. Seated within the flower of radiance sit the seven lords. And we know there are seven spirits of Yahuwah from the space-time above us, from the heavens above us. Seated within the flower of radiance sit seven lords from the space-time above us. We know there are seven spirits of God in heaven, helping and guiding through infinite wisdom, the pathway through time, the children of men. Mighty and strange they, veiled with power, silent, all-knowing, drawing the life force, different yet one with the children of men. And what did Jesus say? I am an alien among men, right? I, different and yet one with the children of light. And we are all his children. All right. Let's mark the place right there. When We'll just read one last line. Custodians and watchers of the force of man's bondage, ready to loose when the light has been reached. First and most mighty sits the veiled presence, Lord of Lords, the infinite nine. Over the others from each cosmic cycle, weighing and watching the progress of men. Yahweh bless you and keep you in the name of Jesus, Messiah of the world. I love you. I'm praying for you. Don't forget to do a little bit of breathing exercises. Do the breath of life. And then breathe in as slowly as you can. And then breathe it out again. Do that a couple times a day. Alright? God bless you. Amen.